For the last three decades, Knowledge Center at Bursa has offered technology, resources, services, space, and a sense of community. Since 1985, 14,000 titles have been collected with care and attention to high financial literacy standards. In collaboration with a global community of institutions, we ensure access to the world's diverse intellectual and cultural economic heritage, as well as fast online services for connectivity to the financial world. Serving the Bursa Malaysia community and beyond, Knowledge Center at Bursa empowers you in your trading and investment analysis research. Financial information at my fingertips. Visit Knowledge Center at Bursa Malaysia today for the collections, for the services, for the sense of community. You have suffered financial loss while investing and you think your bank, broker, fund management company, unit trust management company, PRS provider or distributor or their agent or representative is responsible. You need help sorting out the problem or want to seek redress. Where do you go? Sidrek is here to help you start the conversation and reach some resolution. First. Lodge a formal complaint with a company that sold or offered you the unit trusts, shares, derivatives or other capital market product or service. But you're not happy with their response. You have 180 days from their final written reply to come to Sidrek. Or if there's no written response and it's been 90 days since you wrote to them, you don't need to wait longer. You may come to Sidrek even though you haven't received a final response yet. Sidrek first checks the eligibility of your claim. For example, is it within Sidrek's claim limit? Is it against a member of Sidrek? And so forth. If your case is eligible, we begin the dispute resolution process. All information in this process is confidential. We get both you and the member you're complaining against to sit with us and have a conversation. Documents and information will be required from both parties. No lawyers are allowed in the mediation process as we keep the discussions informal and private. Our mediators are impartial and will hear both sides out and help parties communicate constructively towards resolving the dispute. Two outcomes are possible at this stage. Either both you and the member agree to a settlement or you don't. If the both of you agree to a settlement, an agreement is signed and the mediation process ends successfully. But if both you and the member fail to reach a satisfactory resolution, mediation has thus failed. But don't worry, Sidrek then proceeds to the next stage, adjudication. During adjudication, parties are given the chance to provide any further information to help their case and ask each other further questions. Our adjudicator will then study and consider all facts and information provided, including the conduct of the parties, laws and best industry practices, as well as what's fair and reasonable. Sidrek's adjudicator will then make a final decision on the dispute and the monetary claim. If the decision is in your favor, it could be a full award or a partial award for your claim. But if the decision isn't in your favor, then no award will be made. You, the investor, will still have a choice. If you reject the decision, Sidrek will simply close the case and you may seek other legal avenues for redress. If you choose to accept the decision, however, the member has to comply with it. Once the parties have confirmed compliance to the decision, Sidrek will close the case. So let Sidrek help start the conversation towards resolution. For more information, visit sidrek.com.my or call 03-2282-2280.
All right. Hello, everyone. So welcome to today's webinar brought to you by Bursa Malaysia and managed by LifeChamp. So the topic for our webinar today is build passive income with exchange trader bots and supers. Once again, welcome to the session. I am Carmen and I will be the moderator for today. So before we move on, uh, allow me to do a little bit of disclaimer. All right. So Please do take note that everything that is mentioned in this session is mainly for educational purpose. In no way that we, will we are providing any recommendation to buy or sell any securities that is mentioned here. So be reminded that uh, you are 100% responsible for all the risks if you make any investment decision. So without further ado, allow me to introduce Mr. Dibotra, who is our speaker for the day. So he is an investment fi and finance and investment professional with a bachelor degree in finance and investment and has completed level three of CFA exam, showing his passion towards investment banking. On top of that, you know, over five years of investment experience, he has focused on Malaysian and American stocks, commodities and index futures and utilizes fundamentals and technical analysis. In addition to that, over one year of experience in teaching investment, he has managed to taught over 500 students. And last but not least, he is, he is also proficient in wealth management and financial planning. So without further ado, please welcome Mr. Yibocha to our webinar today. Hello, hello. Can you hear me clearly? Yeah, we can hear you very clearly. Yep. All right. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Kaman. Thank you for the very uh, quick introduction of me. So uh, I will share the screen right now just give me a moment yeah. all right so i'll pass the floor to you um yep okay little roller all right okay i think everyone can see my screen right now right so it's gonna be everything is good okay, okay so great. Uh, thank you, Carmen, uh, just now for a quick introduction. So my name is Debo. So I'll be the speaker today about uh, these bond uh, things. Okay, so a lot of times we do heard a lot about uh, bonds, suku, you know, in Malaysia. So sometimes we read about news. Also, we can, uh, you know, read about things like a, a company raise up funds of perpetual bond, perpetual suku. So to, to be honest, uh, what is actually this bond thing? Right? And what is, what is actually this suku? Uh, how can they actually help us? You know, for example, like us, a retail investor, uh, how can it actually help us? You know, to be honest, if you try to understand about suku, right? And you try to understand about bonds. Huh? Um, if you read a lot about these finance books, you can understand that uh, bonds is actually a very good thing. Uh, whereby it's actually a brother and sisters uh, with a totally different personalities to equities, okay, which is what is called stocks. So a lot of times, if you know about like Warren Buffett, he always says that in his book, uh, An Intelligent Investors, so what he says is that in the whole world, like we have thousands of uh, investor vehicles, investment tools, but if you try to break it down, the easiest part to, you know, make a portfolio management, it will be stocks and bonds. So these are the only two things. Because these are the only two things that actually helps you in all kinds of economy periods and in all kinds of economy circumstances. So today we'll learn about bonds and sukus, the basis of it. And then if you guys have any questions or you guys like have any uh practical example that you quite kind of like not to understand about maybe bonds or maybe sometimes you heard about bond funds so you can just you know span it up to me okay so today learnings outcomes we'll talk about very briefly what are bonds what are suku the basic features of bonds okay bonds can be very confusing sometimes because it has a lot of similar terms like yield interest and all these things but sometimes I will tell you uh, what's the difference of all of these features, uh, okay? And then how can you start to invest in bonds, okay? Like I said just now, it can help you to build up a very good, efficient portfolio, okay? So let's not like drag too much of it. Let's we'll start right now, okay? So the first thing first, we will talk about what are bonds and suku, okay? So if you want to talk about bonds, right, we will first have to understand about how companies actually raise their funds, 
Okay, being said, like for this example, I believe everyone knows about this company, uh, Tanaga National. So basically, uh, what they provide is they provide electricity to all of us, or to business and all this uh, retail household, uh, all of us. So their business, um, in normal times, a business we will have all these kind of things, lah. Uh, if you want to really raise about capitals to go and expand your business and maybe like put up even more uh, generation power, okay, put up even more uh, generation uh, power plant, something like that, uh, you can actually raise fund, okay, either by equity, which is you actually ask more of the investors. Maybe sometimes right now you are looking at government, okay, you ask about government, whether they want to support you or not, uh, whether you, you ask about uh, the other country as well, maybe other, country, other countries, other governments, whether they want to support you or not. But that kind of things, uh, because if you're asking from someone and uh, you have to give them some things, right? Because uh, they give you the capital, takan they just like uh, give you the capital and expect nothing. So you have to give them something. So definitely you have to give them maybe equity in shares. Lah. So they will have this ownership. So this is the bad thing, you know, like for Tanaga. Because if you are the owner of Tanagas, you will try to keep on the control under your hand, okay? So that the things will not go off. Suddenly, people coming in saying that they have more uh, shares uh, holding compared to you, maybe like 30%, you're having like 20%. So they want to snack you off. So this is the bad thing for, you know, business owner when they think about raising funds. So instead of raising funds from this side, you can do it the other way, which is actually the traditional way, uh, going from the bank, Okay, you go to the bank, you can get a loan. But this is the things that come in very tricky because the banks, uh, they're always very demanding, right? Like if you have ever experienced going to bank, try to get a mortgage loan, they're always very demanding. They will ask you about all the secret things and all your credit things. And at the end, uh, you try to negotiate for higher in, uh, lower interest, they always say no, no, no. Uh, they always tell you that this is the lowest interest, but somehow when you heard from the other friends, then they, they will tell you that they're having a low interest. But this is a bad thing. No? So this traditional way uh, is very tedious also for the company. So instead of going these two ways, uh, uh, we can go a new ways is this, uh, which is debts, uh, bonds. Uh, okay. So instead of the debts, uh, this, this part as we see here, the right hand is the equity, which is shares. And then the left hand side is debt. Debt, although we think about it, is thinking about the banking side of the debts, but instead of taking the bank side of the debts, uh, taking a loan from the, from the banks, uh, we can actually raise up bonds from investors. Uh, so this time around, it's also still around from investors, like from government, uh, Malaysia government, other countries' government, like other institutions. But this time around, we are using bonds instead of like shares. Uh. So we'll give them the bonds and then they will, they, they, will, they will give us the capital. So the bond is somehow is like an ownership. But this kind of ownership, uh, it's not the ownership to have the shares of the company. It's a different way. So this is how bonds, you know, use uh, for all these kind of uh, companies and, and, and corporates like that, okay? So typically, just now it's just a basic uh, an introduction, okay? What is bond? So right now we'll look at even more details, like how can you look at bonds, okay? So as I say, a bonds is actually, you are getting the capital from investors. Investors. You can sometimes call it lender as well because sometimes it acts almost like a bank like that. But typically, these people, they won't be the kacha kacha time, but they keep on asking you to have like, uh, whether your, your, your secrets give me, give me a look, give me a, have a look, uh, whether your asset can pledge it or not, all these things. It's all about you give up the condition to us and then we will think about it whether it's a good bond or a bad bond something like that so being investor they will think about it themselves so the first the first way of it is like the investor will then analyze and then having their own due diligence they will do up their own analysis so if they think that okay this company is quite good huh? so they think that you are having a very bright future they can actually invest in you so okay lah, they say that they actually invest so they lend the fund they invest, they give you the capitals. So they give you the capitals. This is the bond issuers, uh, which, which is like just now the example, the Tanaga like that. Okay, Tanaga is being the bond issuers. Okay, so from there, they take up the capital. So they're able to have this capital already. They go and expand their business. They put up bigger projects, bigger development, and all these things, growing the business up. And definitely once their project is 
successful, right? They will generate the income. So this is the third step, right? Okay, they generate the income and then they give you back the, the, the interest, which is to say that they actually use your capital to go and expand their business. The business give them the income and then in return to you as an investor, okay, they will give you a periodic interest, okay, by every year, okay. So this is how a bond looks like, okay. Typically, it's almost like a bank loan, but this time around, the lender itself is actually like investors, like you, me, institution, everyone. Doesn't necessarily be the bank, be the bank like that. Like even bank can be the bond uh, investors as well. So this is the interesting things, lah. Okay. And then we will have another terms of the bond, which is called suku. Okay, suku. So what is actually suku means then? Are they the same thing? Uh, it's, it's not. Eh? They are not the same thing. Okay. Uh, reason being, suku is actually the Islamic terms for bonds. Okay. It acts almost like the same things, which is they give you, uh, you, you as the uh, investor, you, you give the capital uh, to the issuer and then the issuer go and expand and they get income, they give you interest. It's almost the same thing like this. Lah. But the only difference that the suku has, it's like the evidence of ownership. Okay, The evidence of ownership. Now, this is very important Okay, because uh, for bond itself, a normal bond or what we call conventional bond Okay, which is not the Islamic type, huh? you actually don't have the ownership of the assets. Okay, you don't have the, the ownership of the assets. Okay, meaning to say, if we put it plainly to say, huh? if something happens to this project, you will only get back the, the asset value. You know, like uh, if this company is they bankrupt, huh? only they bankrupt, huh? they, then you were able to get the assets uh, back. Whether what kind of value they have, then they, they only give it back to you. But in suku, it's a different thing because you have the ownership of it. Meaning to say, if the project fails, you as the suku owner, suku holder, you are, you are directly having the ownership on this particular project. So the particular project, it has to be sell off and then it has to give back the value to you, whatever it is, uh, on that particular project only. So... Although it's a bit confusing, but you can just think it think of it. It's like it's a it's a totally same thing. It's more like when they um structure up the suku, they will have to like put up a, 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 another special uh, company. It's what we call a special vehicle company. They have to put up a special company and then try to control, you know, try to like take control of this uh process, uh being the ownership of this something like that. So this is suku, okay? Uh, it's so totally the same thing as bond. It's just another terms of it, but it's a different world, okay? But definitely there has a there, there is a very special thing being suku. Uh, usually you don't see a lot of banks they will issue up suku, except the Islamic bank, okay? Except the Islamic bank. Uh, a lot of banks, they usually they don't have suku. Uh, only if they have this Islamic uh, operations one. But if let's say they are just a normal conventional bank, they don't have suku one. Uh, because suku is supposed to, supposedly to have only in this kind of Islamic companies. Uh, so if you look at like uh, Hennigan, they definitely cannot put up suku's one uh, because they, they, their business themselves is actually like haram edit, So they cannot, they cannot put up like suku's. Uh, so this is all a thing to remember. So instead, like if you one day some, some, some kind of bankers, they actually tell you to buy Hennigan's or suku, then it's kind of crazy things. Okay. And then we'll look at Bonds, in the old days, it's very interesting, okay? Bonds is actually not like uh, something that is very, you know, magical, okay? Some, in the old days, it's actually something physical, you know? You can actually touch on it. So, in the old days, it's very funny because if you buy on some, some company's bonds, they actually give you the bond certificate. And then, the certificate actually comes with this coupon, okay? The coupon is almost like our domino voucher like that, okay? At the, at the bottom of it, okay? So uh, the, the coupon, they will have a lot of different dates. Uh, okay? They have the different dates. So once you reach that date, you actually can tear it up and then you can go to the, the bank okay? and, and try to um, claim your interest back. 
Okay, so this is what it's 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 quite interesting in the back. Okay, back back, back then, in the old days like that. Okay, but nowadays now uh, everything is digitalized. Uh, our bonds is definitely a different way. Uh, okay, we don't have this certificate anymore. Okay, uh, our 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 bonds nowadays we only in digital, so it's basically basically like a name. Okay, so here as we can see, uh, I have this uh, MGS Malaysia Government Securities, and then uh, I have this uh again MK, which is uh uh uh, uh this actually I can't, I can't I can't don't remember what what bond is this, but uh, I will tell you like how can we uh understand how what is this bond means like, Okay, so typically the bonds usually they will code it as this way. Okay, the first uh alphabets like the first uh group of alph alphabets is basically the bond names okay which is this mgs meaning like malaysia government securities meaning our malaysian government bonds uh, okay and then they will then comes with a group of interests okay so in this case it's 3.759 okay this is actually the coupon okay the coupon of the bonds okay so I will tell you what is the coupon means later, okay? And then the third group of it is the date, okay? This date is actually the maturity date, okay? Meaning to say, uh, for example, maybe this bond is around uh, 15 March 2017 when you look at it. So if you look at the date of it, it's 15 March 2019, then you know this bond actually have like two years of period, okay? After they reach on the period, then they will give you everything back. They will give you the principal back, okay? And then the last one, uh, it will be the, the, the type of it. So this one, as you can see, it's GOVT, government. So meaning to say it's a government bond. And then this is the uh, MIR in terms of Malaysia ringgit currency. Uh, so as for the bottom one, it's also the same thing. So this is actually a company bond, okay? I can't remember this company name, so I, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Uh, coupon, 4.78%. And maturity date, uh, 31st of March, 2022, okay, last year. And this, this is the type, uh, the corporate bond, okay, and currency, okay. So this is how our bonds is look like today, okay. And typically, you can have the understanding uh, being said, because as you can see here, it's government. So meaning to say government themselves, they can actually issue bond as well. So this is also uh, another way how... Uh, government, they actually have, uh, you know, fundings, you know, they can put up projects, uh, big development, mega projects and all these things. So a lot of times it's more using the bonds to get on fundings and all this. Okay. Okay. And then we will understand about um, why do the corporate issue the bonds? Okay. Why actually they want to issue up the bonds? So just now I, I, men I mentioned a bit of it, uh, like, the bonds, uh, because if you raise one using equity, then you are, you are actually giving out controls. You are actually giving out ownerships to other people. But uh, if you're using bonds, bonds, they don't actually own your business. You know? They don't actually own your business. They only own the assets when you're actually bankrupt. You know? When you actually bankrupt, then they will, have, they will come to you. They say, oh, I want to claim, you know, my bond value. Okay, that, that is the only thing. So basically, if your company, if your business can run smoothly for the long term, you don't have to worry. Lah. So this is the key thing. Why corporate actually issue bonds? It's a much more better way. Okay. And then the second thing, it's about the cost of funding. Okay. It's also pretty low as compared to stocks. Okay, how do, say, how do we say so? If you compare, um, using equity, it's a lot higher in terms of cost of funding. Okay, uh, this is how we um, explain it a little. Like, if you imagine, right now I'm raising a funds using equity. And if my project is actually going really well, Okay, my project is actually going really well. I actually earn quite a lot using the capital I have raised from equity, from shares. But the thing about it is like, you as the shares owner, then you will start to have, you know, start to being greedy. 
because right now you look at the project, you know that oh yeah, my investment, my investment on this shares is actually successful. So you try to demand more returns from the company, being like hey, try to give me more dividend lah. Right now you earning so much already, try to give more dividend. If you can't make it lah, I sell your shares lah. You know I can't take it lah. So if you look at this way, uh, the cost of funding from equity uh, is actually very costly because if you want to uh, like fulfill their needs, their wants, you know, you want to fulfill their appetite, right? It's actually a very hard thing to do because you give up first year dividend. Like maybe right now you try to be conservative a bit. You nagle with them saying you give only 3% dividend. The next year, your project is doing even better. They're definitely not satisfied with 3% anymore. They ask you to give up higher, maybe 5%, 6%. Then the third year again, you do even better, even, even, even stronger. Now they were not asking for like 6%. They were asking even higher and higher, crazily higher. So this is why like cost of funding from equity, from the shares uh, is very high. From bonds itself, it's very, very low. And it's very helpful for the companies. Okay. And then the second thing, uh, the last thing, uh, just now, just now I, I talked about this ownership already. So the last thing about it is the interest on the bond is also having quite a good thing in terms of deductible, okay, in terms of the income tax. Um, this is slightly technical if you really want to find how they actually helps on income tax. But to see another way, it's easier to put it is like if you compare using only the equity and also uh, using bonds, you will find that the tax payment in terms of the company that actually raised by using bonds, it will have a lower tax payment as compared to the one that using shares. So this is how it actually uh, will show you, you know, for a company. So you will actually save up in terms of tax payment, something like that. Okay. Okay. And then right now we'll look at how are bond actually price okay how they how they actually price okay uh typically just now we are talking about the bonds history and how bonds is actually uh works and all these things uh, and what are their benefits and what are their uh weakness something like that so right now if you look at it uh, bonds uh, uh we have all these terms uh, it's very very technical uh, they have a lot of terms okay uh, but simply to put uh, bonds when we raise bonds we call it the par value Okay, and then the par value will always start at 100. Okay, the par value will always start at 100, meaning to say the face value of it. Okay, so this face value, um, it will sometimes, it will goes up and goes down one. Okay, uh, at the beginning, it will be definitely 100. After that, once they raise up, you as the bond holder, when you're holding it, you can actually trade it. Okay, you can actually trade it. Meaning to say, if you, right now you are very urgent, you need the capital, okay? Because bond as an as a instrument, you, you lend out the money and then you get it in return, you get up interest back every year. And then once they mature, right? Then you're able to get back all the principal back at once. Uh, but maybe in the midterms of it, you know, maybe the, the, the maturity date is five years time, but maybe in two years time, you try to get the capital back. You can actually sell in the market. But this is the tricky part then. Uh, the bond price being to say like after two years holding the bonds, right? You want to sell. Uh, then we will call this, you know, depending on the market, uh, depending on the market condition, we will call it either a premium bond if your bond price is higher, okay? Higher than the par value, okay? Meaning to say higher than the 100 face value. or we will call it a discount bond if the bond is actually sell at a lower than par value. Okay, so these things I will explain later on how, why, why the bond price actually, uh, how they fluctuate. Okay, it's, it actually fluctuate according to the market condition. Okay, but just remember for now, there is a two different category of bond. Okay, one being the premium bond, being to say the bond price is actually at higher pricing. And then there is a discount bond being that say that the bond price is actually lower than the par value than the hundred ringgit. Okay. So this is actually how we uh, price the bond. Okay. Uh, and then 
from here, we will try to understand then the, the, the bond price, how they actually um, price in different kind of uh, market condition. So just now, as I said, there is two types of the bonds being one is the premium bond. The second one is the discount bond. Okay. So right now, maybe the audience here, maybe they have, you have, you have this kind of questions are like, it's quite confusing. Uh, like just now you say that the par value is at hundred and then right now the price will fluctuate. How is this say so? Uh, the reason being is like this because bond itself, just now we talk about the coupon, the coupon, it will not fluctuate. Okay, bond itself is like, um, we, we will lend you the money. Okay, we will lend you the money. Let's say we lend you a hundred thousand. Okay, then from there, we will get interest every year. Okay, we will get interest every year. At the end of the period, we will get back all of the principal. Okay, meaning to say, I put a thousand ringgit investment. Every year, I will get a certain interest. Okay, maybe let's say 5% 5, 5 meaning to say I will get like uh, 50 ringgit every year. And then at the end of the period, I will get back a thousand back together with the interest as well. So this is how bond works. Huh? So the typical bond, okay, to put it simple, the typical bond, the 50 ringgit interest, it will not change. Okay, it will not change. Forever, it will be just 50. Until the maturity, it will be still 50. Okay, this is how a normal bond works. Okay, but in our economy environment, everything is changing daily. Okay, being to say the easiest way to say it's our interest rate. Okay, our interest rate. Okay, so how to say it? Right? It's like this. So for example, right now, if I'm, I am Gunting Malaysia, right now I'm actually raising a bond. Okay, so the first thing first as a corporate, I will look at the interest first. I look at interest, let's say for example, at the moment right now is 3% interest. So I would think that me being a Gunting Malaysia, having a really good and sustainable business, a very strong branding. So the interest right now is 3%, right? I'm good. Lah. I just put up a 4% bond. So meaning to say, if you invest a thousand ringgit into it, every year they give you 40 ringgit. Okay. Until the end of maturity, they give you everything. So I will raise. Interest, 4%. Okay, coupon, 4% bond. So you as an investor, and right now you're a buyer. Okay, you say, oh, interest, 3%. Uh, bank give me FD, 3% only. If I buy this bond, I get 4%. Pretty good, right? Okay, I invest. Then maybe after one year and two years later, uh, before the maturity, right? Right now, a different economy environment. Really. Right now, the interest, when I was raising the bond, right? The market interest, uh, the FD uh, is actually 3% only. Right now, let's say for example, economy is pretty good. Market is going up. So banks, right, they will do this. Our bank, the government, uh, when the market is going pretty good, they will try to control. Okay. They will try to control. They, they try to stop not to let the economy grow too fast. Because if it grows too fast, then you will, you will come up a bubble. So it's a bad thing. So what they will do, they will increase the interest rate. Uh, so this is what happens like last year time. Uh, our FD is growing up. Our mortgage is paying even higher interest, all these things. So let's say in two years time, uh, interest right now is 5% maybe. 5%. FD is 5%. Okay. So down the road like that, uh, let's say right now you as the bondholder of this 4% Gunting Malaysia bond, uh, Right now, suddenly you have an emergency. You need to sell this bond in the market. Okay, you need to sell this bond in the market. But the thing about it is like the economy environment is no longer three percent anymore. It's five percent right now. So you, as the investors, like other investors, you think about it. Will you want to buy the Gunting Malaysia bond or not? Okay, because if you put it into FD, you you can already get a five percent ID. FD, you know, FD, you straight away get 5%. Why you still want to put it into this Gunting Malaysia bond? Okay. So definitely uh, in that way, uh, me as the bondholder, then uh, I will have to sell it cheaper. So I will have to sell it in lower price. Okay. I will have to sell it in lower price. So because of that, uh, so I have to bear the losses. Uh, 
You know, I, 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 at the beginning of time, I put up a hundred ringgit capital to the lender, okay, to, to, to lend it. And then two years later, because my urgency, I have no choice. I have to sell it quickly. But the economy in, uh, environment is not good to me. So I have no choice. I have to do it. So I sell it. Then I take out the losses uh, of the capital losses. Okay. So this is how the relationship between the price and the yield. Okay. The yield. Okay. Meaning to say, uh, your, uh, it's actually they're having a, a high, uh, I, I missed out a, a part of it, meaning the interest. Uh, okay. When the interest is actually going up, uh, Okay, the interest is going up, meaning like the yield, you can you can take on yield as the interest. The interest, let's say it goes up for the bond yield, it goes up like our interest, our OPR, our bank negram measure interest. Let's say it goes up, it's very bad for your for your bond. Okay, because your bond price will then drop and it becomes a discount bond. Okay. And then the other way around, if the interest actually goes down, okay, the interest goes down. Meaning to say right now your bond will then be a different case. It will be much more like an attractive bond, a higher interest bond. Because imagine just now the 3%, instead of going up 5% interest, we go down to 1% interest only. Like back then our COVID time, 2020, it cut the interest until 1%. Suddenly, if two years later, you take up your Gunting Malaysia bond, you say that, oh, I want to sell this bond. Thousands of investors want to buy from you because your bond is having what? 4% interest. Right now, if we look at FD, it's like 1% only. So definitely people are crazily want to buy from you. So this is how you and the bond price works different way. Okay, they, they works uh, inversely. That's what we call inversely. Okay, so this is also the, the interesting part where it is used to hedge against the market okay together with stocks okay this is this is how we use because if if i uh, if you look at it uh, even more deeper you will find that uh, bonds this this is why we say that bond and stocks it works differently okay because when stocks are going very strong this is actually the time where you know like the interest is going up and up going up and stronger and stronger so your bond will be like not a good value. But if like back then, 2020, stocks dropped to like crazy, crash at like 30% to 40%, interest rate cut down everything. Our economy is very, very bad. So imagine if that time you already have bond holding in your hand, then your bond will go up in value very high. Probably like 30% to like close to 100% also can. So this is how you, you know, play around together with stocks as well as bond to try to make up a risk management in your portfolio. Okay. Uh, if this, this, may, this maybe can be quite confusing and quite deep. Lah. So if you guys have any problems, try to speak up uh, so we can have even clearer explanation later. Okay. Okay. This one, I will try to like explain plainly on how we actually look at the coupon rate, the, the rate, the yield, and all this thing, okay? So just now we were talking about uh, the yield, right? The yield being to say like the interest, lah, okay? So, uh, but you can always look at the other way around, like, okay, the, the yield here is about the interest and how it will look at the price and how, how it affects. So it will make you under, easier to understand. Okay, so being said right now, for example, uh, uh, the coupon rate is 6%. Okay, the bond price is 100. So this is the, the time where the bond is actually at par value. Okay, at par value, meaning say it will be the same price, 100 ringgit, okay? And then the coupon will be 6% all the time, the cash flow getting 60 ringgit every year until the end of the period, you'll get back 1,060. So this YTM, it's what we call yield to maturity, meaning to say if you hold this bond until the end of the maturity date, you will get 6% return uh, every year, 6% return every year, okay? So in scenario two, uh, so you try to imagine, uh, let's say in scenario one, the interest is actually, uh, at this moment, our economy interest is actually like 5%, okay? In scenario two, let's say it's a bad scenario, okay? 
the interest rate actually from 5%, uh, it, it goes down, okay? It goes down to like, you know, maybe 2%, uh, 3%, something like that. So your bond price uh, right now increase, uh, your bond price increase, okay? So as you can see, right now it's a premium. So if you look at it, 6%, 1,000 ringgit. If you look into it, uh, YTM is actually lower. Yield to maturity is actually lower, 5.6%. Okay, 5.6%. Because this YTM is calculated as if at this price, you invest into it. Only the time right now you buy into it, and then it will be a bad thing. But if a different way, if you imagine, they try to sell off 101, okay? Let's say it, it buys at 1,000, okay? This uh, 2017 time, it buys at 1,000. Yeah, let me see. Uh, this time, they buy, they buy at this time by they using this pricing, okay? You use this pricing to buy. So at the end, you actually, let's say you get 60 ringgit 80, and then you just straight away sell off. In one, one year of time, uh, instead of getting like 60 ringgit as the profit, you're actually getting 70 because you're having like the 10 ringgit gains. Uh, so this is how it comes, uh, you know, uh, coming from the anger as a bond, you are able to get a higher gain when the interest rate down, okay? And then the third scenario is much more like the interest rate, let's say right now it goes up from like a 5%, goes up to like 7%. So your bond will be a bad thing, okay? If you already invest at the beginning of time, okay? If you already invest in the beginning of time, uh, so at the moment, uh, the price is actually 99, Okay, meaning to say like the price is actually lower. You have no choice. You have to sell at 99. So you will get a lower return. Uh, but if you, if, if at, the, at this moment, if you haven't invested yet, then you will get a better price. Lah. So at the end, your yield to maturity, you can see here, 6.4%. Okay, so this is how we look at it uh, for bond yield and also what is their um you know, the, the potential interest, the potential capital gain and all of it, okay? So the three ways to make money, eh, just now as I said, eh, the three ways to make money uh, is the first thing first is the coupon payment, okay? Just now as I said, you are getting the interest. The second way, the capital appreciation, okay? meaning to say the interest rate movement. If it goes up, you are lost, you are in loss, you are losing. If the interest goes down, your bond will appreciate. It goes up in value, okay? Uh, but there's also a third way, which is the forex gain, uh, meaning to say if you are investing into uh, Australia bond, New Zealand bond, or maybe US bond, the, the currency, when it goes up in value, you will get extra return from that. But this one, it's harder to gauge uh, the, the forex gain. So normally we only look at the coupon, and also the capital appreciation, okay? So the two key risks on bonds, right, is these two things, okay? And it's especially important for credit risk, okay? Because if we look at bonds, right, uh, as you can, uh, as right now you know that bonds is almost like just a debt where you give to the company and then they go and expand for the projects, right? Uh, but the thing about it, if you look at it, uh, if the company that you are giving it, right, is actually a very bad company, they're having a very bad credit score and they are not earning at all, they're actually losing money. So this kind of company will have a very big risk because you will be worried because they can't pay you back the principal. Maybe they can give you the interest. Okay, first year they give interest, second year they give interest. The third year, they say that they defaulted. They can't pay you the interest anymore because the project fails on it, anything like that. So this is, a very, this is actually a very, very bad scenario whereby uh, we as a bondholder, we should always be careful on this, this credit risk. Credit risk is the most uh, scariest things for the bondholders because if... The company somehow they have some things going on, right? Then you might lose everything. Okay, you might lose everything. But as long as you invest into the bonds that actually having a very good credit scores, 
like you are investing into very well-known companies, uh, Genting Malaysia, uh, Top Glove, Maybank, and all this. So basically, you are not that in kind of situation. Uh. So as long as you try to avoid what we call the high yield bond, okay, the 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 riskier bond, okay, so then you will be safe from that, okay. And then the second thing is the interest rate risk. So this one, just now as I uh, explained, uh, the interest rate risk because as the interest rate is in different condition, okay, as we are in different economic condition, maybe right now it's very, very good economy, the interest going up. So your bond will then look like very worthless because in another way, I can just simply put into FD will do. So if right now suddenly you have liquidity issue, you try to sell your bond, you have to take losses because that time nobody's want to buy from you. So we definitely have to lower down your pricing. Uh, so this is uh, two key risks for the, for the bonds like that. Okay. Okay. Now we'll look at like if... Oh, sorry. Okay. Oh. Okay. So normally when a company is, let's say they, they actually default on your bonds. Huh? So what will happen to you? Uh, basically, if let's say a company, they suddenly defaulted, uh, like for example, in the past three years, uh, definitely you guys know about the Serba Dynamic. Serba Dynamic is the one that actually defaulted their bonds. They are not able to pay back the bonds to their investors. And then uh, this is what happens. Is like, then the company, they will start to be investigation. Okay, Then they will slowly look into what kind of assets they do, have, do they have. And then at the end of the day, they will sell off the assets into cash. And then they will give you by orders of this. So you as the bond holder, you will first get the capital. Okay? You will first get the capital. Then only is the preference shares. Then only the last one is the equity. Okay. So because of this pyramid things, huh? because of this pyramid things, bond is always considered to be safer uh, as compared to equity. Uh, so part of it is also because of this thing. If the company is going bankrupt, you are the first one that actually getting the cap, uh, company value first. Uh, but definitely, you don't want this thing to happen to you. Okay? Because let's say it really happens, usually the company is really in a very uh, shitty scenario, and then definitely you will not get any kind of value uh, anymore. So basically, you will get a lot of losses anyway. So you, you really don't want to have this kind of thing happen to you. So most of the time, when I talk to my clients, when I talk to my uh, students, I always tell them this. Uh, bond is a very good thing, but keep in mind, you will always have to be very careful on high yield bond, high interest bond, because those kind of bonds are the ones that you should really look into it very carefully or try to just avoid it, uh, because if you want to avoid this kind of risk. Okay? Okay? So the benefit of investing into this kind of bonds, uh, okay, the, ben the benefit of it is actually... Uh, Let's say you 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 understand about as I as I explained about all these bonds things, huh? um, there there is some of these benefits pretty good. So the first thing first being they are able to fight against inflation. Uh, this is almost acts like your FD, acts like your fixed deposit. Uh, being said, your fixed deposit they always give you like three percent to four percent, but you invest the bonds right. Usually they give you higher around like one percent higher or two percent higher lah. So you can fight the interest uh, inflation even better for that. Uh, then the second benefit, this is, I, I will consider this the best one because asset diversification, meaning to say uh, using bonds and stocks together, you will have a really, really good uh, asset diversification. So in all kinds of economy scenario, right, don't have, you don't have really have to worry anymore. Like if you put too much into equities, right, you have to be worried because if 2020, some kind of a uh, stock market crash, right, happens, right, then your portfolio value will be in very big, deep trouble. But if you having bond in hands, right, then it will be a different story because the market will crash down, the interest rate will cut down, but your bond value, holding the bond value, they will go some in value. And then from there, you are able to sell your bond from then, it buys on the low price equity, buys on the low price shares, then you will be in a very good spot for your portfolio value. Okay, and then the third benefit will then be the cash flow planning. Okay, the cash flow planning. Okay, uh, this cash flow planning is it's much more like for the retirement planning. Okay, retirement planning. Uh, a lot of times, um, 
this is all very, very, very critical questions. A lot of time when I, when I deal with clients, uh, like they are trying to plan up their retirement funds. So we as Malaysians, a lot of time we ask this, this kind of question to ourselves. Like we, I want to retire. So, but how much of the retirement funds I need? Okay. So always here, I put up a very easy uh, uh, explanation to them. So I always say that, um, what kind of a lifestyle do you want? Okay. Is a month 5,000 of capital, 5,000 of budget, is it enough for you? So some of them will say, okay. Some of them will say, oh, 5,000, not enough. Because I, I want to go for like uh, very luxury types of a lifestyle. I want to go vacation, all kinds. So instead of all kind of a different ways, uh, we just take 5,000. So then I will say 5,000 uh, per month. Let's say per year type will then be 60,000. Okay, 60,000. So 60,000 one year. If you are able to invest into a bond, maybe 10 years bond or 30 years bond, that can actually give you a, a, a fixed interest, let's say like a 5%, okay, for 30 years. So easily your requirement for your retirement, uh, your, your, your retirement funds uh, will then be just around like 1.2 million. Because if you have 1.2 million, you straight away invest into this 5% bond for 30 years, you will easily get 60,000 every year and then your retirement will be covered easy. So this is uh, one of it, like what we call cash flow planning. Like how can you use bond as a tools uh, for you to actually plan up your retirement funds like that, okay? And then the last benefit of it is a uh, saving mechanism, meaning to say uh, instead of saving into FD or you know just putting into banks, uh, most of the time, I will encourage people to just save more into your uh, bonds so you get higher interest, okay? <clears throat> oh, wait. Okay, so here I try to compare a little bit uh, between like uh, bond versus fixed deposits, okay? So most of the time, I will say bonds are definitely a better things uh, because if you look into it, uh, there are a lot of uh, features that actually bond has, uh, but fixed deposit, they don't have. So the first thing first being like the capital appreciation. Okay. So fixed deposit, they don't have this thing. Fixed deposit, they, the FD, they always just give you the interest every year. That's it. End of story. Uh, for bonds, then it's a different story. It will go on to, uh, according to your market condition. Uh, if your interest rate somehow, your economy is going down very bad, your interest rate is cut down. So you have the opportunity to sell your bond. Okay, sell your bond in Busa and then you're able to get a higher capital appreciation. Okay, but of course, insurance wise, bond is not insured, meaning to say there is no guarantee. Okay, there is no guarantee. Okay, fixed deposit is insured, uh, but up to 250,000. Okay, by PIDM. Okay, for liquidity, liquidity it then will be uh, by offer in the market, meaning to say, like if you want to sell. Definitely, if someone that there is a buyer that is willing to buy from you, then you're able to sell easy. Uh, but for fixed deposit, you can do so. Okay, you can you can do so, but you have to take up the cost of forfeited interest. Meaning to say, your interest will then be kosong. Even let's say your interest you wait for like eight years, eight months times or something like that, it will be kosong definitely. Okay, returns wise, normally bond is higher. Uh, FD is basically very low. Uh, like right now, we are talking about FD being like 4%. Okay. Our interest rate is 2.75. Uh, our bond, our FD is around like 4%. For bonds, it can come to like a very good bond, like uh, my EG bond or maybe Gunting Malaysia bond. Gunting Malaysia bond can come to like 4.7. Uh, my EG bond can come to like 5.8, something like that. Yeah. So that that is the best thing. You know, it, it gives a very good, returns as compared to FD, okay? Okay, but this is also another comparison, okay? This is also a very good comparison, which is the bond versus bond fund. So if you guys uh, actually invested into unit trust, uh, a lot of times you can, you can come across this uh, bond fund as well. So what are the difference? Okay, is bond funds also the same thing as bond? Uh, it's actually not uh, because uh, 
bond itself is actually an individual bond. Okay, bond itself is an individual bond. Uh, being said, if you're buying a Gunting Malaysia bond, it will be just Gunting Malaysia bond, one thing. Okay, one kind of bond. Uh, bond fund, another way around. It's much more like a collective fund, a pool of fund invested into different kind of bond. Okay, so there is a lot of bonds there. Okay, so for these two bonds, it will be, def it will be definitely a difference uh, between their features. So the first thing first being the certainty of cash flow. Okay, the cash flow. Okay, because for individual bond, the certainty of the cash flow is definitely 100%. As long as the company don't default, okay, the company will just stay on in business. It will definitely be 100%. It gives you the interest on that date and definitely it will give you. Okay? But bond fund itself, it's not certain. Okay, Because uh, a lot of different fund manager, okay, because you are, you are you're having a pool of fund managed by a fund manager, man managed by an expert, so what they do, they have different kind of strategy. Uh, maybe they will trade the bond. Okay, they will buy and sell the bond. Or maybe sometimes they will uh, just hold on the bond. Uh, but particularly for maybe for like a one year time, two years time, then they will do selling and buying again. So there, there is a lot of different kind of uh, strategy in, in, in bond investing. Uh, so because of that, right? So you will not have like a certainty things like definitely the funds will uh, give you a bond interest on that particular date. No, sometimes maybe they'll drag. They do give you income distribution, but sometimes maybe they'll drag a bit here, maybe drag one year, maybe drag one, uh, one, two, three months, something like that. So it's a, it's a, not a certain things like that. Okay. But definitely for bond fund, in terms of uh, diversification, you're definitely a good thing. Okay. Because you are investing into a lot of different bonds. So even one bond's default, right? Uh, you don't have to worry much because maybe they affect your value probably like two to 3% only. Uh, but let's say for individual bond, you only invest into that particular bond and that company actually defaulted. Uh, so your, your whole capital, your whole principal basically is just counting. Uh, so this is the difference uh, between a bond and also a bond fund, okay? Okay, then where are the bonds actually traded? Uh, in Malaysia, being said, uh, our bonds, most of the most of our bonds basically trade over the counter. Okay, so what does it mean over the counter? It means uh, by offline method. Most of our bonds are uh, okay trade in uh, over the counter. Being to say by offline method, you only have to get the bonds uh, when you actually go to the bank and ask the bank about it. Uh, it we, we don't really have like a, a platform okay to you know uh, show up all kind of a bonds there and then uh, just you can just google it and just trade something like that. Uh, most like, most of the bonds but Busa actually they they come up with a new platform uh, where you can actually find all this kind of a bond uh, meaning to say exchange traded bond okay exchange traded bond like, like our topic today. So, but back then like you know five years time back uh, 10 years by 10 time back, uh, it's always like over the counter bond. You need to say only by offline method. And a lot of time, these bonds are very huge in value as well. Okay, because uh, bonds in Malaysia, um, one bond is particularly worth like 250,000. Okay, 250,000. So normally, what we call is like one lot. Okay, one lot of bond, uh, it's 250,000. So usually, if you trade, over the counter, right? It will be a very expensive thing. Uh, so this is how they works out. Like uh, you go to the counter and then you say that uh, you have maybe a million and you want to invest into bonds. So you are the buyers, then you will actually being approached by a dealer. So the dealer will actually help you to find the seller, something like that. Uh, then they will try to give you the bonds, you know, to, to uh, make the deal. Uh, but Usually, this kind of thing is very, very expensive like, for standard lot. Uh, okay. Uh, but just now, that one is over the counters. Okay. But right now, as for our Malaysia, we, uh, Busan Malaysia, we do have like this platform over the exchange, meaning to say you just uh, log in into uh, your account or you go to this platform. Okay. And then you can search up uh, the bonds 
uh, available in the company or okay, in, in the market. Uh, maybe like if you want to search up for uh, Tanaga National, uh, then you can search up whether they have this bond or not, whether they have this company bonds or not. Uh, if there, there isn't any one, though, that means no one is actually selling, you know, because uh, for this kind of over the exchange, meaning to say it's much more like the secondary market. Like if there is a buyer in there, then you uh, there is a seller in there, there must be a buyer in there, then only you can uh, get the bond, something like that. Okay. So right now, our, our Malaysia, uh, Busa Malaysia is actually getting better and better for this kind of platform. So uh, there, there is more and more liquidity in the, com in the, in the platform also. And, and uh, to be honest, it's a very, very good thing. Uh, it's a very good uh, progress as well. And, and hopefully, you know, people are getting uh, well-known, you know, better, better understanding about uh, how bonds works and, and, you know, push up the trading volume uh, for the bonds. Okay. And then we will come to buying and selling on Busa Malaysia. So just now, as I mentioned, right? So uh, Busa Malaysia, they actually have this platform that actually can, um, you know, uh, buy over the, the exchange, meaning to say buying or selling in the Busa bot platform, something like that. Okay, so uh, if you want to buy a bond, right? So definitely there's uh, two ways, like primary market, or secondary market. Uh, primary market, that means like a subscription, you subscribe the company bond, uh, they first put up the bond, something like that. But usually this kind of primary market is very, very high, la, you know, as I said, like over the counter kinds of things, uh, like 250,000 for one bond particularly. Uh, for secondary market, that, that means like you are selling, la, you know, like selling shares, things like that in, in, in the platform. Okay. Uh, then selling is also the same thing the other way around. Okay. Just that you, you right now, you instead of buy, you are selling. Uh, but most of the time, if you are sell, that means only for secondary market. Lah, you know, only for secondary market. Uh, you can sell the bond before the maturity. But if you held the bond until maturity, then you will only get back the principal. Lah. So that is, that's it. You don't have to do anything. You just hold until the maturity. Then USA will help to clear off uh, everything and then give you the principal back into your account. Okay? And then, so you are able to trade, you know, all this bond in, in their, in their uh, platform. Okay? So basically in the platform, uh, there's different kind of uh, sectors. Uh. So as I said just now, there is a bond, conventional bond, and also Islamic bond. So Islamic bond is the what we call suku. Okay, so you have to choose the right sector as well uh, because it, it, it will have like different kind of uh, availability also. Okay. Okay, this is for example, okay, how they actually um, structure it out. Okay, uh, how they actually structure it out for the bond. Okay, so fixed income is actually listed and traded on the exchange uh, in Malaysia, uh, Bursa Malaysia platforms. Okay, and then uh, usually you can able to search. Uh, you know, if you, let's say you try to search on, uh, this is the stock code of it, like the bond code of it uh, from the issuer, Isan Suku Berhad. Okay, and, and this is the listing date, uh, 8th of August, 2017, uh, maturity date, 8th of August 2024. Okay. Uh, what are the tranches value? Tranches value being to say it's the uh, total value of the bond. So you can also compare this. Uh, like, is this bond very huge for the company? You know, if let's say, for example, in Sansuku, Berhad, this company itself is having like uh, a billion in assets. So you understand. So this 5 million is actually a kacang pute to them. So you don't have to worry. Uh, they can actually pay off this bond very easily. Okay. Tanner, uh, meaning to say the maturity time, okay, seven years. Yield, okay, right now, you, if you invest, is 4.6% every year. Uh, so this is how we look at the bond and then, you know, try to buy and sell and all these things like that. Okay. Okay. So here we come to like, how do you find information on bonds? Okay. So, to find information on bonds, right? Um, it's a uh, very different things because for stocks, usually we go for this uh, KLSC screener. So in that kind of a platform, you have all kind of uh, information and you know uh, the news, uh, the d dividends, and all kind of uh, their quarter report and all these things. Huh? But for bonds, right? It's a totally different view. Okay, this is some things that if you guys want to learn. Uh, you have to really understand about bonds. It's like 
you have to have a different perspective on bonds. Okay, because for shares, right? Let's say we are investing into shares, we are actually looking more onto the potential upside, like uh, if the company, whether the company can grow uh, bigger in terms of business uh, or, you know, can grow even higher and sustain, then they give us even higher dividend a long time. Okay, so in terms of shares, uh, we, we will use this kind of perspective to judge whether the company is good or not. But for bonds, right, that will be a totally different perspective because you don't care much about the growth, okay? You don't care much about the growth. You only look at the sustainability, okay? But I repeat, uh, you only look at the sustainability because the company can be in a very shitty industry. Right now, it's a very bad moment for them. But as long as their business is able to sustain all kinds of challenges, right? So this is also considered as a very good bond also. So for example, like the glove companies, okay? Like the glove companies. So if you look at the glove uh, shares, right? It is very, very bad in price, okay? Because they, they, are, they are having a very challenging uh, prospect. Their, their, their company is, you know, not making money, they're losing, you know, probably for the first time in, 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 in decades. Uh, so it's a very, very bad moment for their shares. Okay. But for this kind of glass makers uh, bonds, right, it will be a totally different thing because the amount of cash they are holding right now, right, is definitely able to just pay off the bond easily. Okay. Uh, the bond maybe they are, they they actually raised like uh, a few years back then okay right now some investor they want to sell so if you ever come across uh like top glove bonds right so i can say that it's a it's a very very good bond because uh basically you if you look at the sustainability of it uh, they can definitely just pay out easily they have a lot of cash their business is in 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 still in you know in in operation and they have a lot of big assets and all these things so basically, you can understand on all this. So this is how we look at bonds uh, in terms of their perspective. Okay, but how do we find information? Like how do you really look at all this information? So as I said just now, stocks is look at the KLSE screener. So for bonds, right? Then we look at this Bigs Malaysia. Okay, Bigs Malaysia. Okay, so they will have all kind of uh, uh news more purely on the company's sustainability and also the analysis on the company's sustainability. And then you can try to read on, you know, what, what their views are, maybe because of their credit rating is higher, uh, their cash flow is very, very good, you know, uh, their assets is huge as compared to the value of the bond itself. So all these things are a plus point as compared to like how we uh, analyze for bonds, okay? So here, if you look at into uh, this bigsmalaysia.com, right? So you can go into that kind of website and then you can just search. Uh, okay, like right now you can search uh, different kind of category, okay, different kind of subcategory rating also. You know, maybe you can go for a different kind of rating, higher rating, triple A rating, then it gives, up, gives you a very, very good bond and all these things. Year to maturity, you can uh, change, like you can accordingly to your uh, uh, years, uh, recording, uh, uh, according to your like year standard, okay, maybe you want a five years time only, you want one year only, you want two years, some people want 10 years retirement. Uh, so you can just choose on your own uh, uh, risk profile, okay, in this uh, big manager, okay. Okay, then we almost come to the last part of the bonds idea, okay. So just now as we explain, most of it is more about like, what is bond about, what is their features and how they, you know, really uh, price and what kind of bond and all these things. So right now we will talk about like, how do we really invest into bonds? Okay, how do we really invest into bonds? Okay, so as I mentioned uh, occasionally, uh, so into bonds, right, we will have to get the perspective of sustainability. Okay, so in terms of sustainability, there are 
like three big parts of it. So being the first one is the business nature of the issuer. Okay, the business nature of the issuer. How do we say business nature? To put up a simple uh, comparison, we compare construction company and Gunting Malaysia. Okay, so definitely Gunting Malaysia is the one that is having a better uh, competitiveness compared to the construction company. Uh, the reason being is because construction company, usually they will uh, complete up the project then only they will get the cash okay they will always like complete the project then they then they only get the cash uh, so being to say like their cash flow is not that good okay but for gunding malaysia it's a total different thing because their business nature is much more like they will get the cash straight up front okay gambling hotel or even their you know uh, tourism and all this thing so they will definitely get the cash back first. So in this kind of business, you will definitely know because this kind of business, they are cash rich. So being say, they were able to easily just pay off your bond. So you don't have to worry about the bond interest. Okay. So the second thing definitely you have to look into is their financial profile. Okay. Meaning to say like whether they are healthy uh, in terms of how many cash they have, uh, how many debts they have, Maybe the asset, is it big asset? Is it small asset? Uh, or maybe they, they, do they have like, you know, a lot of different hanky-panky things. Like a lot of time their cash flow is always negative. Uh, so this is sort of a bad thing. Uh, this is what happens to Serba Dynamic. Uh, like their, their financial, they're having a huge debt. Uh, they're always having bad cash flow. So this is like a signal to you. Uh, this is not a good bond for you. Uh, okay? It's a riskier bond, something like that. Okay. And then the third one, uh, this is all very important because this is what happened uh, only like last two months like that uh, happens to this uh, credit Swiss bond, okay? What we call the a AT1 bond, okay? The structure of the bond, okay? Because as I explained just now, from the beginning until now, right? I only explained the simple idea of a plain vanilla bond, okay? Meaning to say uh, just a straight bond. Okay, giving you interest every year and then by the time of maturity, they will give you back the principal. Uh, but if you try to understand more about bonds, right, you will find that bond, they actually have a lot of different complex uh, structure. Okay, sometimes they call it uh, step-up bonds. Okay, step-up bonds is, uh, to, to explain it simply, it means like uh, they will have a period. Once it's over the period, they will give you the coupon rates Every year, maybe right now they are giving you five percent, but right after the the this particular particular date, they will always give you a higher interest rate. Let's say by one percent every year. So your 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 coupon will be then from fifty ringgit every year becomes like 60, 70, 80, 90, and ten something like that. Uh, but this kind of bond is very bad because if you know that they they have this kind of things, meaning to say it's it's actually. It's it's higher. It's a higher return. It's a good thing, but meaning to say because the company credit is much more weaker, so they try to put up this kind of a features to attract more investors to you know invest to them. Uh, so they have different kind of bonds, like the Credit Suisse bond is what we call the Coco bond. Coco bond it's much more like if anything happen to the company, they have the right to just default the bonds, and you guys are not able to claim uh, ownership or like try to claim value from the company. Uh, so this is also why, uh, you know, the AT1 bonds, when it defaulted, right? When Credit Suisse actually defaulted, uh, you know, there, there's like a 10 billions of bonds, you know, just like disappear, something like that. Uh, this is what we call Coco bond because this bond is actually structured in a way that if something happened to us, we have the right to just default and don't have to pay you anything. Even you go to the legal firms, you try to claim uh, there isn't anything you can do so. Uh, so this is the bond, how they structure it up uh, for, 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 for the credit suite bond, okay? So you have to be very careful on the structure of the bond. Uh, I, will, I will say, always pick the easiest one to understand, you know, just pick up the, the plain vanilla bond, just pick up the straight bond, that will be the safest, uh, you know? Okay? 
So I almost come to the end of this bond section. Okay, so a key takeaway for today's section is uh, bonds, it is much more safer compared to stocks. Okay, the reason being because the return is constant. Okay, the return is certain. Uh, you basically know when you are going to get the interest and you don't really have much volatility as compared to stocks. Uh, stocks, even a good dividend paying stocks, let's say by one day I face a lot of challenge, I can also choose to not pay you the dividend. Okay, but bonds, no. Bonds, definitely you have to get the, 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 the coupon. Okay, and then the second key away is default and interest rate rates uh, can be mitigated. Okay, default and interest rate interest rate rates can be mitigated as long as you try to you know control your you know your your risk appetite okay if you are having a, a conservative kind of a risk profile always try to go for the high uh, rating bond okay so your 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 default risk is low then you don't have to worry anything okay interest rate also if you're having like a fixed tenure most of the time it's like that if you're having like five years investment time just put on five years bond Try not to get like, you know, 30 years or like 10 years, all kind of this kind of thing. So if you're having five years tenure, just put up five years bond. Uh, don't go and take up a higher bond like that. And then the last one is being stable and predictable source of income. Okay, because bond, you have the certainty when the cash flow is coming in. Uh, so that's why uh, for bonds, it's a much more uh, stable uh, investment as compared to the other investment vehicle. Okay, so... I will finish my uh, sharing section right now. Okay, so we will go into the uh, Q&A session. Okay, uh, come on, back to you. Okay, all right, yep, so, yep, thank you. Um, okay, sorry, yep, thank you, Nibo, for your sharing. It was a really insightful one. So we do have a few questions on hand. Okay, the hmm. first one being because you talk about, you know, discount and premium bonds. So people, there are people who would like to understand further, you know, in terms of investment, hmm. should they actually purchase, you know, discount or premium bond? Like which would be a better choice for them? Hmm. Okay, okay. Um, there, there isn't a one, you know, one to all uh, answers uh, for this kind of a questions. Uh, it's more like looking at your risk appetite because I will say sometimes a premium bond is a good bond also because um, if you look at it, sometimes it's much more like uh, they have different kind of intention. Sometimes they look at the company and then they think that the company having a really good brand and having a really safe uh, uh, risk, right? So then they, they look at the premium, they don't, they don't actually afraid of it. As long as the, the yield, the return to you, you know, the YTM, the yield to maturity is actually comfortable. Like maybe premium bond at uh, 101, but somehow your YTM is around, your yield to maturity is 4.5. And let's say I'm comfortable for 4.5, I'm good. So I will take it anyway. Uh, but definitely if you are a much more like a, um, you know, a risk taker, okay, you, you are much more aggressive. So you should go for the aggressive bond because that will actually give you a higher you to maturity they can give you because you are buying at a lower price and then they get you they give you a higher coupon as compared to a lower price like that so from there you're able to have a higher return at the end of the day so this is like how whether your risk profile is suit to the kind of a bonds or not hmm. right so thank you for your answer Moving on to the next question, someone actually asked, like, upon maturity, so the amount of return that they will receive, is it based on, will it be on value upon maturity or is it on par value? Uh, it will be on par value, okay? It will be on par value, meaning to say the par value actually is the maturity value, okay? So the par value is 100, so they will always give you 100 at the end of the maturity. Uh, there isn't any, like, a maturity value and then it will be a different value, no. Uh, it always go back to par value. So this is also an interesting thing whereby uh, if you buy a bond, it has a very, very long period, right? Uh, interest rate, when it changed, right? As I said, interest rate, when it change, right? Your price will change, okay? Uh, if the tenor is still long, your price changes will be even significant. Uh, for example, if let's say right now the bond is actually having an eight years time, but the interest rate actually hike up a lot. So your bond will then be really, really in bad value in terms like maybe your, your bond price even can go down to like 70 or 60 or 50 
So it will be a very bad thing if you sell at that period. Uh, but as you goes on, it comes to closer to maturity, you will see that the bond price will easily goes up because it will goes back to par value, hundreds. Uh, so this is also uh, the reason why I say, like if you're having the tenure of five years, always just invest, invest in five years. So even some things like this happens where you don't have to worry because you know that, oh, I can, you know, I just put up five years, uh, never mind. Uh, so you don't lose anything. Uh. Mm, all right, all right. So for the third question, so someone actually mentioned that, you know, equity and bond are is not really performing well last year. Lah. So is there, you know, any correlation between both equity and bond in general? Uh, okay, typically to say, their correlation is much more like a negative correlation, meaning to say like if equity is going good, uh, bond is basically going down. Uh, if equity is going down, then bond is actually going up. Uh, but I will say, Last year, not to say only last year, to be honest, 2020 until even right now at the moment, uh, it's always like um, a, a, a really weird period whereby uh, if you look at the historical data, uh, whenever we have like market, sorry, whenever we have like market crash, right, um, the, the, the bond price will go up in value, uh, the equity will be in very bad. So that presents the negative correlation. Uh, but only in 2020, whereby we have what we call this liquidity crunch. Uh, a lot of people, they actually just sell off everything because this is like the, the, the first in probably like two decades or three decades, something like that. So the first thing they only look at uh, some kind of a virus that can actually be so infectious and everyone is getting it. So this kind of thing is actually like, it's, it's almost like a war whereby it, it hides up the panics and everyone is selling everything. So because of that, uh, only in 2020, you can see equity and bonds actually go down its value together. Uh, but if you talk about like last year, right? Last year, I would say it's much more like because of the interest rate as well. Uh, equity going down, yes. Uh, at some point of time, it's because interest rate is going hiking up at the wrong timing uh, because our inflation is too high. So somehow we have to hike up our interest rate very, very quick. So equity is having the, the pressure of it. So interest rate high, uh, hiking, right? Bond is actually in bad things also. But in normal economy circumstances, right? Normally, if our economy is going strong, meaning to say growing stronger and stronger, then only we will try to increase the interest rate. From there, equity, you can you can see that equity is really hike up quite a lot from there. You really earn up quite a lot from equity. Yeah, so this is what happened to like last two years and three years like that. Mm, all right, I understand. So to follow up again, so does it mean that it really highly depends on the economy itself? In any case, perhaps you can elaborate further, like, you know, uh, who are the market makers in general and, you know, how do they operate? How do they affect the, I would say, the rise and you know, drop of the whole view of maturity itself? Uh, it's more like, uh, as you can see, it's more like the demand and supply, you know, uh, the interest rate, is the one thing that actually affecting the bonds, okay? Uh, if you look at plainly on the economy value, um, it's more like, you, you, even for example, even we say that last year equity is bad, but you have to remember uh, equity in terms of 2020, end of 2020 until like 2021 is pretty good. So that time also is the different way whereby bond is going normal and equity is going up. So th this is also the things that, uh, it's more on demand and supply and different kind of a market uh, circumstances. Uh, being said, like interest rate, when it goes up, right, definitely people are not going to look at bond anymore because uh, when we look at our FD, we will have even better interest and easier to understand. Uh, for bond, we have to go and study their credit risk and all these things. So it's much more uh, difficult to invest into that kind of a period. So, but the different, the, the idea is like, if the interest is higher and higher, then bond issuer, they will have to give up higher coupon as well. So this actually comes with like demand and supply being to say, if the interest rate straight away hike up, right? In a very fast pace, it will be very bad for bonds, okay? But once it's stabilized, right? At the higher period of higher interest rate, uh, then from there, you will see that bonds actually comes up with higher value of bond, higher interest, higher coupon. So the demand will then suddenly and coming back here again. So this is always like, looking at the, 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 the condition of it, not to say like, you know, just, 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 uh, you know, yeah. Right, I understand. So uh, there's, just, there's actually not much time, but I think we can take hmm. two more questions. Uh. So there's one, because, you know, from the example, it shows that 
uh, based on the value itself, the bond value is actually pretty high. So as a retail investor, if they're looking hmm. for small capital bonds, let's say maybe around like 1,000, how do they go about it? Is there, a, is there a way that they can actually invest that amount instead? Well, for this, right, uh, basically, I would say, unfortunately, if you want to look at like particularly bond, right, uh, individual bond, uh, there isn't for a capital as small as a thousand uh, because uh, for a standard lot of bonds, it's 250,000. So it's very hard for you to really invest into an individual bonds. But what you can do is actually you can invest into bond funds where uh, bond funds, they do have this uh, capitals uh, requirement just as low as so by maybe 500 or even a thousand okay so if you're using just this kind of a capital then you can just straight away go for bond fund but definitely bond fund as i said the difference being uh you will not get the certainty of the cash flow but in terms of one year time they will definitely give you the income they will give you the income distribution it's just more like you will not really know uh the fixed period like maybe on this date itself i'll definitely get it no you, you will have the bond effect meaning to say like interest rate when it goes up or go down, you are able to have it. Uh, but uh, the certainty of it is much more lower than, that. yeah. All right. So, yep. Yeah, so for the last question, okay, they ask how to distinguish bonds versus preference share. What hmm. is the main consideration by issuer on these two uh, different fundraising methods? Okay. Uh, oh, this is actually a really good uh, comparison, okay? Because... A lot of times, uh, preference shares is almost like the same thing as bonds because uh, preference shares, they don't have the ownership of the shares as well uh, because they, they don't really have like dividends or, you know, like capital appreciation and all this. They're only getting fixed uh, interest, okay? And bonds as well, also getting fixed interest like that. Uh, but the key difference, I would say it's much more, they, they, are, they are typically the same thing, but the key difference is much more like tenure. Okay, tenor is the one of the key things for bond and preference shares. Uh, being said, preference shares, to be honest, preference shares, they, they don't really have a fixed uh, maturity. Okay, preference shares can be a perpetual thing. Okay, uh, only let's say, for example, the issuers, they always, when they issue preference shares, like especially in Malaysia, they always issue this kind of a, a redeemable preference shares or irredeemable preference shares, something like that, meaning to say they actually can call back anytime they want. Uh, so this kind of a preference shares is much more like, you know, they, they if they have the capital, then they call back. Lah. But uh, if let's say it's just a normal plain preference shares, right, they always go in a perpetual, meaning to say you have to pay the the the, the holder forever for the interest. Uh, but also another thing is whereby the capital appreciation as well. Uh, being said, bond, you the interest rate changes will actually change the bond price. Okay, so meaning to say there is a hedging uh, uh, mechanism there. Okay, when, when interest rate is down, a uh, very bad market, Bank Negara Malaysia cut down interest rate, then your bond will then increase in value. Uh, preference shares, no, they don't have this kind of thing because they will just give you the fixed interest and that's it, you can't trade it. So this is also one key point uh, for, for preference shares and bonds. Mm, all, right, all right, so yep, thank you for your sharing. Huh? So I think with this, uh, we will conclude today's session uh, for today with Devo. So I do hope that everyone here uh, did learn, you know, a thing or two regarding this whole topic today. So yep, I think once again, we can all just draw in our challenges right there. Thank you to Devo, okay, for today. Right. And really, once again, thank you for joining us. So before I proceed, okay, All right.